sound. Our speakers and subwoofers along with the rest of our system creates sound. But in order to fully understand car audio or home audio and truly build an amazing system, we need to understand the basics. In this video, let's start with the foundation and take a look at what music really looks like as an AC waveform. Understanding the basics of sound will allow us to make educated decisions when it comes to building our car audio or home audio system. And educated decisions lead to amazing results. Wham bam, let's jam man. Hey guys, welcome to Car Audio Fabrication. In one of my recent videos, I reviewed a new digital signal processor. And on that video, a lot of the comments that you guys left, it made it obvious that you guys really enjoyed the advanced topics, but to truly be able to understand the more advanced topics, it's really important that we also understand the basics. Ugh, basic. I actually hate saying that word. Why? I just get the impression that on the internet, when people see the word basic, they just tune out. They just think, ah, I already know all that. I don't need to know the basics. Guys, one of the worst things you can do in any hobby or sports is convince yourself that you know it all. Stay humble and always be open to learning something new. It's a good idea to always refresh yourself constantly with the basics because a lot of times as you become more advanced, you'll have more of those aha moments when you review the basics that will help connect further lessons on the advanced topics. So in short, based on some of the overwhelming requests from you guys to review some more of the basics, I am gonna be going back and covering more basics of audio, but I wanna tell you guys, don't skip these videos. Don't shy away from them because you think you already know everything there is to know about the topic. It's always good to have another review. Okay, good chat, high five. Do it. Do it. Let's talk AC waveforms. So to get started, let's talk about a speaker. So in a very general sense, here is the anatomy of a speaker. We have a magnet, and within the magnet, we have a voice coil. The voice coil is attached to the cone, which is suspended by this rubber suspension, and also by the spider. Now the suspension just allows the cone to move in and out. Now you guys obviously know that when a speaker is creating sound, the cone is vibrating in and out. Now in order to make the cone move, what we need to do is pass electrical current through the voice coil, which then because of the magnetic field will actually make the cone move. Now there's two different types of current that we can use to pass the electricity through. The first is direct current and the second is alternating current. Now an example of something that produces direct current is a battery. I've connected speaker wires to the speaker here and if I touch the leads to this battery, you can see that the cone will move. Now, because this is direct current, the cone will only move one way and then stay there. So if I put the negative lead on the negative end of the battery and the positive on the positive, you can see that the cone pops out. Whereas if I reverse the polarity, you can see that the cone goes in. Now, this is direct current, so once again, it's only gonna go one way or the other way. Now with alternating current, or AC, what we're actually doing is taking something like a battery, but we're flipping the polarity constantly. Now you may have heard the term Hertz. Hertz is the amount of times that we flip that polarity within a second. So then by flipping the polarity constantly, we're gonna be constantly moving this speaker in and out. So now let's set up our little test setup. So now rather than connecting to a direct current battery, I'm going to connect these wires to my amplifier. The amplifier will produce an AC current, which will then move the speaker back and forth, creating sound. Now you can also see that I have a microphone set up here. And what we're gonna do is actually play some different test tones and see what happens by listening through the mic. Now I'm also using the computer to play a test tone sine wave. In this case, I'm gonna be playing a 500 Hertz sine wave. So if I turn on the 500 Hertz sine wave, we can see what it sounds like. So here we have our repetitive signal, and when I'm talking, of course, it's gonna pick up a little bit of my talking, but you can see that the 500 Hertz is repetitive. Now when we increase the volume, the amplitude of this sine wave is also going to increase. So 
So now that we have a basic idea of what an AC waveform actually looks like, let's talk about some of the different terms that apply to it. Understanding these basic terms is really critical for understanding more advanced topics. So let's get into it. So here I have my graph and on the X horizontal axis, I have time. On the Y vertical axis, I have amplitude. So let's draw a sine wave. So my drawing skills aren't that great, but just imagine what happened here continues to happen as long as we keep playing this test tone. Now this is what's called a sine wave, and in that example that I first showed you guys, the sine wave, once again, that I was playing is 500 hertz. So what are we actually seeing happen here? What is actually happening is 500 times a second, the speaker is starting at its resting position, it's going up to its max height, it's coming back down to its resting position, going down to its lower height, and then coming back up to resting position. Now, of course, it's not actually resting, it's just passing that neutral point, but what's happening is this is continuing to happen, the speaker is vibrating 500 times a second. So wait, what's the definition for this? What is this that's happening 500 times a second? Well, this, from here to here, is called a cycle. So the speaker is completing 500 cycles of full up, full down, back to the zero point 500 times a second. 500 cycles a second. Now maybe you guys have heard the term period. So a period is the amount of time that it takes for a sine wave to complete one cycle. So we know that we're doing 500 hertz or 500 cycles a second. So in that case, our period is one five hundredth of a second. One five hundredth is equal to 0 0.002 seconds. So when we're playing a 500 hertz sine wave through a speaker, the speaker actually completes a full cycle within 0 0.002 seconds. So obviously it's a very, very quick. Now let's compare this to, let's say you were playing a subwoofer and you were playing at 30 hertz. 30 hertz, would be 1 30th of a second or 0.033. So obviously if you were playing a 30 hertz signal on a subwoofer, it's still a very, very fast and a very short amount of time, but compared to a 500 hertz signal, it's obviously significantly longer. So you could almost say that the subwoofer or speaker isn't moving as quickly when it's playing a lower frequency note. Now let's talk about wavelength. So wavelength is the actual distance it takes for a sound wave to complete a full cycle. Now in order to determine the wavelength, we need to know the speed of sound. Now the speed of sound actually varies based on where you are in the world, but a good average is about 1125 feet per second. So in order to determine how long this 500 hertz sound wave is, we need to divide 1125 by the frequency. So 1125 divided by 500 is about 2.25 feet. So in other words, when you're playing that 500 hertz sine wave, it's going to complete a cycle in a distance of two and a quarter feet. Now again, let's compare the subwoofer, let's say 1125 divided by 30 hertz, because if we're talking about a subwoofer here, that would have a distance of about 37 and a half feet. So the reason I wanna make this comparison here is so that you guys understand that a bass frequency sound wave has a much longer wavelength than a higher frequency. In fact, as a quick side note, this long distance is part of the reason that a subwoofer can sound good facing away from the listening position and really anywhere in the vehicle. It's not as critical as a shorter wavelength frequency. Now, up until now, we've been talking about a sine wave. A sine wave is considered a periodic wave. Now, what does periodic mean? Periodic means that this wave completes in a repetitive cycle. In other words, as long as we keep playing a 500 hertz test tone, it's going to continue being the same waveform. It's periodic. So what if we were playing a 500 hertz sine wave at the same time as playing, I don't know, a 400 hertz sine wave? What would happen is this waveform is no longer going to look like this. It's gonna be slightly different. And I can actually show that to you guys in a second. But the point I wanna make is even though 
it's gonna look different, it's still gonna have a repetitive cycle. So it's gonna still be considered a periodic signal. Now there's another term we need to know and it's called an aperiodic signal. Aperiodic means that it's basically random noise. It doesn't repeat at all. And this is what we start to see when we play music. So in a second here, I wanna take a look at what an aperiodic signal also looks like on our little test setup. But it's important to understand these basics because in the future, we're gonna to start to want to talk about things things like clipping. In other words, what happens when we increase the amplitude past the capabilities of the system? What happens to this nice clean wave? We're going to talk about that in the future and also understanding these terms like period and wavelength. These are really important when it comes to fine tuning because if we know the wavelength of different speakers, sound waves in that particular bandwidth of frequencies that they're playing, we can make better decisions on how we actually want to install those speakers and also how we can tune those speakers. Let's jump back over to the test setup. Okay, so we're back over at the test setup and what I'm gonna do now is what I was talking about. I'm actually going to play a 500 Hertz sine wave at the same time on this other program that I'm playing a 500 Hertz sine wave and we're gonna see what that looks like. Now what I want to point out here, and again, the chart's going to jump around a little bit because it's picking up my talking, but what's happening is we still get a periodic wave. Yes, it looks different. It doesn't look like a sine wave where it's perfect every cycle, but the pattern repeats. So now we can actually take a look at what music looks like in the AC waveform, and I have a song here from the YouTube Audio Library. This is a free song to use online. I'm going to go ahead and play it. Now I think what was actually interesting to note there is that certain parts of the song where it was just more of the electronic music, you could actually kind of still see a general wave. It had some other things occurring in the wave because obviously there's multiple different frequencies of sound that were playing at once, but you could actually kind of see what resembled a sine wave. Pretty interesting, huh? So there you guys have it, AC waveforms. Now we have a little bit better understanding of what the signal really is that creates our music. If you're new here, here on this channel, I create car audio reviews, build blog videos, and lessons and tutorials just like this one. So if you are new, I hope that you consider subscribing. Thank you everyone for watching this video. If there's a topic that you would like to learn more about, be sure to let me know by posting a comment down below, or if you have something to add, I'd love to hear that as well. A special thanks goes out to Jose, Brian, Ali, Corey, DJ, Emmanuel, Rory, Truman, and Jerry, along with the rest of the Patreon support team, thank you guys for helping support the making of this content. More videos here on screen. Until next time, my friends, don't forget to design, build, and install.